From the earliest times, as we read in the Gnostic writings of the Library of Nag Hammadi, of the writings of Anthony and Origen, Luke 17 has been used as a proof text saying that Jesus came and fundamentally changed the Jewish apocalyptic narrative that was present in Judaism at the time. And so I think it behooves us to look at Luke 17 and see what is really going on. Did, was Jesus trying to change the hope that was commonly held in Judaism at the time, or was he reaffirming it? I think Jesus was saying the latter. So in verse 20, the Pharisees come to Jesus and they say, When will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus answers, The kingdom of God is not coming in ways to be observed. Or other translations say, with signs to be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Then he says to his disciples, the days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look there, or look here. The parallel of this is Matthew 24, which adds, look here here in the inner courts, or look there in the wilderness. And I think this is key to understanding what Jesus is saying. Do not go out or follow them, for as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. And then he goes on to describe the day of the Son of Man, the day of the Lord, that it'll be like the days of Noah, eating and drinking, and then suddenly judgment comes, and like the days of Lot fire coming from heaven. And so you have three issues in Luke 17 to deal with. First, is the kingdom that Jesus and the Pharisees are talking about the same kingdom? Do they view it as what is common in first century Judaism as the, as the Jewish messianic kingdom that's ushered in by the day of the Lord in which the Messiah comes, raises the dead, judges the living and the dead, makes a new heavens and new earth, and rewards the righteous with eternal life in the kingdom of God, the Jewish Messianic kingdom? Or is it something fundamentally different in which Jesus is introducing a different vision of the kingdom of God? First. So secondly, in light of that, is verse 20b and verse 21 saying the same thing as verses 22 through 37, or is it saying something different? What's the relationship between those two things? And then third, why does Jesus change the verb for come between verses 20 and 20b, or uh, 20a and 20b, and verse 21, from Erkamai to Ami? So these are the three issues to look at. Now, in most modern commentaries and throughout church history, the idea is uh, that the Pharisees had kind of this overly apocalyptic, nationalistic, ethnocentric Jewish hope that gets characterized like this. And Jesus is criticizing that overly future-oriented hope, saying you're focusing too much on the future and the coming of the Jewish Messianic kingdom, when actually that Jewish kingdom is being spiritually realized now, and it's in the midst of you. I don't believe this is at all what Jesus is saying, but rather, I think Luke 17 overall is a polemic against Jewish zealotry, which was uh, very active in first century Judaism. And so Jewish zealotry is the idea that in, in kind of, in the way of the Maccabeans as, as the type, zealotry grew up with the idea that the righteous would gather together by the strength of the flesh in the inner room, scheming out in the wilderness. They would rise up, they would cast off the Romans, and they would help God usher in the day of the Lord and the Jewish Messianic kingdom. And so I think this is what Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees. Not that they have an overly apocalyptic hope, but that their hope is not apocalyptic enough. That it's watered down by the zealots, that they have sympathy with the zealots. And they're looking for signs for how the kingdom is going to come. Signs of Jewish insurgency and Jewish zealotry. And Jesus says, the kingdom is not coming by the strength of the flesh, slowly from within Israel. Rather, it's coming apocalyptically from heaven, from God, like lightning from the east to the west, like in the days of Noah, like in the days of Lot. 
And so I think this is the overall push of what Jesus is saying. Therefore, Jesus and the Pharisees are talking about the same kingdom. Jesus is criticizing how they see that kingdom being ushered in. They see it by the strength of the flesh in a zealot type way. Jesus says it's coming apocalyptically from God alone. And they need to trust in God alone and pray to him. Okay, and so because of this, Jesus' response in 20b and 21, I think, is saying the same thing as verses 22 through 37. It's an apocalyptic response. This is how the kingdom is coming. So this brings us to our third point. Why does Jesus change the verb from erkamai to amy in verse 21? The Pharisees ask, when will the kingdom come, erkamai? Jesus says, the kingdom is not coming, erkamai, with signs to be observed, but rather the kingdom is amy in the midst of you. So first thing to note is that the verb amy, to be, can be translated to come, and often is, when it's in relation to origin. So any, a common search of any uh, lexicon, like the BDAG, will show that when it's used with Amy, is used with origin, it communicates movement to come. For example, like when the Pharisees ask Jesus about his authority over the temple, and he says, what about the baptism of John? Where, from where was it, or from where did it come, from heaven or from man? Or like with Jesus and Nathaniel, and Nathaniel says, Nazareth, can anything good be from Nazareth? Or can anything good come from Nazareth? And this is the exact point of Luke 17. Where is the origin of the kingdom? From where does it come, or from where is it? And Jesus says, it is not from the strength of man. It's it's origin isn't from the strength of man, the zealots. The origin is from God in heaven. Therefore, you won't say, here it is in the inner courts, or there it is out in the wilderness. Rather, the kingdom of God is, comes into your midst. And that lines up perfectly with verses 22 and following, in which... The, the, the kingdom of God comes apocalyptically into Israel's midst, not from uh, out of it. Okay, so I think also, a me also is used, Jesus chooses that verb, because of its association with God. Because God is the great I am, a me in the Septuagint. And so the point is that on the last day, the Jewish messianic kingdom is. It's apocalyptic suddenly all-encompassing the messianic kingdom is because it's from God. And it comes from God from heaven suddenly rather than from man from within Israel. And so in light of all this, I think the overall point is rather than a redefinition or a realization or reimagination, reinterpretation, whatever, of the Jewish apocalyptic hope, Luke 17 is a radical reaffirmation and a confirmation of the Jewish apocalyptic hope in that it is contra Jewish zealotry. How much more contra all the Gentile zealotry and the church militant and Constantinianism throughout the ages. Luke 17 is a needed passage and a correction for the church to put its hope in God alone to bring salvation on the day of the Lord.